Hugh makes the most amazing ham and gammon. In this video, we're going to show you how he does it. Welcome to English Country Life. My name's Fiona and together with my lovely husband Hugh, we run a small holding homestead here in Lincolnshire in the UK. And I've still got a broken leg, so please excuse the bright red, red, red cast on my leg. But in this video, we're going to be looking at how Hugh makes ham and gammon because it has to be said, his ham and gammon is amazing. It's unbelievably tasty. And I think you'd be surprised at how easy it is to create. And we source the pork from a company called The Decent Company who operate out of Wales. And when I say company, it's not a big conglomerate. It's actually a lovely lady called Martha Roberts who breeds rare breed pigs and runs them on a Welsh mountainside in very, very high welfare conditions. So we know that the pork has come from a great sustainable source. But let's get started and you can see how easy it is to turn it into ham and gammon. Both gammon and ham start off in exactly the same way. And what we're going to do is cure the ham. And these are the ingredients we're going to use. The first one is black treacle. And you'll notice it's in a bowl of water. And that's actually boiling water because doing that heats the treacle up and makes it much, much easier to pour and to measure out. As well as adding 200 grams of black treacle, we're going to add 200 grams of dark muscovado sugar and 200 grams of salt. And if you want to, add 1.5 grams of saltpetre to the mixture. To add to the flavour, we're going to be adding 10 bay leaves, 2 cinnamon sticks, 10 grams of Szechuan pepper, 4 star anise, and 10 cloves. And the final ingredient we're going to be adding, which is going to make lots of people happy, is 2 litres of cider. And this actually is made with our own apples from our orchard. And it's absolutely delicious. We need to prepare the cure before adding the pork and this simply means adding enough water to cover the ham, putting that into a very large stock pot and then adding the cider. Then start to heat the pan and add all of the remaining cure ingredients. It's important to keep stirring the pan until the salt is dissolved and to make sure that the treacle and sugar doesn't stick to the base and burn before they dissolve. There's no need to boil the liquid but it is important to ensure the sugar, treacle and salt has fully dissolved. Once you're happy that everything is dissolved, leave the cure to cool completely because you don't want to cook the pork at this stage, you just want to cure it. To cure the pork, we're using food grade lidded plastic buckets and we simply place the pork inside and then ladle on the cure until the ham is completely covered. The only problem is that the pork does have a tendency to float, so we need it to be submerged for the cure to penetrate all of the meat. We'll add a dinner plate on top which weights the pork down. All we then need to do is to keep the meat in the bucket for six days per kilo of meat and place it in a cold fridge or a cold outbuilding. We're using a cold fridge. During the curing time we need to turn the meat and stir the cure every three days just to make sure everything is completely covered and the meat is taking on the cure and all those beautiful flavours properly. Once the cure is complete, so that's after the meat has been in the curing vessel for six days for every kilo of pork, take it out of the cure and rinse it to remove any residual spices that might be attached to the outside. It can then be dried either on paper towels or on clean tea towels. At this stage, you can decide whether you want to end up with gammon or with ham. If you want gammon, essentially now you've got a gammon joint. You can either choose to slice it into steaks for grilling or keep it as a whole joint for roasting. Let's take a look at making this joint into a ham. If we decide to turn the joint into a ham, it needs to be cooked and that's done in two stages. We take the joint that's been rinsed of the cure and put it into a large stock pot. We'll then add enough water to cover the ham plus some additional liquid. 
Now we need this extra water because we need to bring it to the boil and cook it for three hours or more and it's going to lose quite a bit of liquid in that time. We know the meat is ready when a skewer easily passes through it. The meat can then be removed from the water and at this stage we'll carefully remove the rind from the joint. We'll then score the fat in a diamond pattern. We like to add extra flavour at this stage by covering the joint of meat with warm honey and cloves. The second stage of cooking then happens and the joint is baked in an oven. The oven needs to be set to 180 degrees Celsius, that's 350 degrees Fahrenheit or gas mark 4. And it needs to be cooked for between 45 to 60 minutes, at least until it looks like this. All that remains is to slice the ham and I like it cut very thickly, so this is what Hugh always does for me. When we make gammon and ham we tend to make two joints at once, one that will become gammon steaks and another that will become ham for slicing because we prefer to do this in bulk, do the job once and it's far less effort. We make so much that it does need to be preserved so we can enjoy it over a long period. And how do we do that? Well, our preferred method is to vacuum pack in portions and then to freeze them. The vacuum packing simply means that the meat is less likely to succumb to freezer burn over time. So that's why we like it. Well, there you are. So easy to make that gammon and ham. And if you make it yourself, it allows you to play with the recipe so you can get the flavours you want. You can put maple syrup on the outside. You can sweeten it up. You can smoke it. You can put lots and lots of flavour in there to suit you. So every time you make it, you can tweak it just a little bit to get it the way you want it. And the other great thing about making it yourself is that you control where you source that pork from. So if sustainability and high welfare is important you don't go to the supermarket anymore contact the farmers direct and get that pork direct from them and if you have liked this video take a moment and give us a thumbs up down below if you're not already a subscriber to the channel hit subscribe and the bell icon completely free service and you'll get to know every time a brand new video comes out now this video was inspired by a question from one of our wonderful subscribers so if there's something you'd like to know about a self-sufficient lifestyle just let us know in those comments and you never know we might make that video for you but if you do have questions on this video or any other video just ask we'll always try and get back to you but for now thanks for watching and we look forward to seeing you next time